Hey Eagle fans, I'm Thomas Mock. Welcome into Philadelphia Eagles Now. And today, we're going to answer some mailbag questions, get into the news and rumors of the day regarding our Philadelphia Eagles. You guys submitted mailbag questions just the other day on our previous video using the hashtag Eagles. Got a lot of really good ones centered around this week against the Saints. Hurts, Wins, Peterson, and of course the future, 2021. Massive offseason for Philadelphia. Let's start with A.W. who says, I think the Eagles will re-sign Hurts this offseason. Also, do you have any other predictions for players other than quarterback that were released or traded this offseason? More on the latter part of that question later in the video. Let's talk about Hurts, though. So Hurts is signed through next year. A lot of people think in their minds, like, oh, well, they talked about trying to re-sign him. He talked about leaving. So he's going to be an unrestricted free agent in the 2021 offseason. Not true. He signed for about $8.25 million in base salary. He has about a $12 million dead cap hit. Can't really cut him. It's a little bit too expensive. But he is going to be an Eagle through the next year as long as he doesn't want either to be traded, or the Eagles want to trade him, or he doesn't want to play for eight and a half or eight and a quarter million dollars. The question right now really is, can he be traded, or will he be traded, and what does Philadelphia want or think that they can get for him? The problem right now that the Eagles have is, one, Hertz has definitely regressed in terms of uh, the past couple of years in terms of total yardage. Now, I say regressed. It's not like he's fallen off a cliff, but this year the injury has been a big issue. The yards have not been there, and all of our offense play has been a real problem. But I also think as you look back and you go, okay, he's over 30 years old. He's taken a lot of hits. He's obviously been one of the best tight ends in the National Football League. Is he worth the money going into an offseason where Philadelphia might have major changes at quarterback, at head coach, and then just the fact that they have a lot of needs in terms of cap and salary space. I mean, they have no money to spend on people, so they're going to have to get rid of people, and Ertz's $8.25 million could be an expendable salary. So you trade him, you you get money for him, or you, you get a compensation for him, you obviously free up money with that contract, and then you roll over to Dallas Goddard, who is supposedly going to be the heir apparent, and they've said this and basically hinted at this ever since they drafted Dallas Goddard all the way back in every year it was, 2017, I think, whenever they got him, it was the Dallas draft, whenever they were in Dallas and uh, either way, they, they they want Goddard to be the future at tight end. I would love for Ertz to be back. I think he's one of the key f factors in this offense, whether it's Hertz or Carson Wentz. They want to have their number one target, and he has been the past couple of years, but the money is going to make things a little bit interesting, and if he wants some sort of mega new contract to be paid like the Kittles and Kelsey's of the world, they will most likely trade him. So I, I don't think they're going to try and re-sign him this offseason. I think it's either, hey, play at $8.25 million, or if you don't want to do that, we're, we're, we're going to trade you. So we'll see, but that's something to definitely keep an, uh, an eye on as the uh, the offseason begins because he's one of the first dominoes to fall as whether you have a new GM or not got to figure out what to do with Ertz going forward you guys think Zach Ertz will be an Eagle in 2021? Let me, let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Again, I hope he is, but will he actually be? That's up for you guys to go ahead and let me know down below. Okay, Logan Santiago says, are the Eagles moving on from Alshon? Uh, the short answer is yes. They will most likely cut him or try and trade him, but I, I would bet money he's cut at some point during the offseason. I mean, it, it's going to happen. There's no way he's an Eagle in 2021. T. Tracy says, do you think that they will have benched uh, wins to give coaching team... To give coaching team more time to solve most of his current issues instead of trying to fix them in a week, or is it just to see how Hurts plays? Okay, so the bench of Carson Wentz by no means is going to fix him right away. Like, this is not a, uh, well, just sit down and study a little bit more, and then we'll come back to you after the Saints game. No, the benching of Wentz, to me, was the final nail in the coffin, at least for this year. Barring Hurts playing absolutely terribly or getting hurt, Wentz will not see the field from a starting quarterback position for the final four games of the year. And listen... Wentz deserves this, even though I think that he needs to stay as the quarterback because I think he needs to stay as the future, and they got to kind of build better around him and help him out. His play on the football field has inevitably led to the benching because you have a quarterback in Jalen Hurts that they want to see what they have. Right now, it's Jalen Hurts' job to lose. If Hurts balls out the next four games and they win and he plays great and the offense is night and day different, then Jalen Hurts, I think, will be the starting quarterback in 2021. I don't agree with that. I think you got to go back to Wentz because he's the future and you paid him the money to do that, but I do think the organization will lean towards trading wins if that's the case and keeping Jalen Hurts. However, if Hurts stinks, then you could have a scenario where they go for a quarterback battle in the offseason. They try to get Carson Wentz back as the quarterback of the Philadelphia Eagles. Either way, I say Wentz deserved to be, to be benched. His play style does, at least this year, at least as the play on the field does. But, man, that play calling, I think... We're really going to know how bad the play calling is and the coaching staff is if Hurt struggles as well. That's going to be the real indicator here, and we're going to find out on Sunday against the, the best pass defense in the National Football League. Yay us. You guys, uh, drop a like if you guys think play calling is an issue. Like, hit that thumbs up button. I want to get 100 plus likes because I, I do think the play calling has been a mega, mega issue. I've, I did a whole video on this, right? Injuries, free agent signings, team building, draft picks, but coaching and play calling have played a part as well. Drop a like if you guys agree. Wampert says, if Hurts plays... 
uh, decently against a great defense like the Saints, is that enough for him to prove himself that he is a starter? Um, yeah, and that's basically what I'm trying to get at here. If Hurts plays well, and then you have to beat the Saints. I mean, just be be better than what Wentz has done, which is a very low bar. He'll be the starter the rest of the year. I mean, 100% he'll be the starter the rest of the year. Now, the problem is we're assuming that the Eagles offense, which has been basically non-existent all year long, one of the worst offenses in the National Football League, is going to get things going against the Saints defense. Look at the passing numbers, the Saints defense. Sorry, the, 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 yeah, the total passing yards allowed by the Saints defense the last five weeks. 262 to the Falcons, and they basically handle the Falcons offense. Broncos, no quarterback but 12. Buck 96 against the Falcons. 232 against the, the 49ers. Buck 86 against the Buccaneers. This defense is unbelievably good. They rush the passer. They stop the run, and they're great on the backside. The odds of Hurts balling out on Sunday are, to me, slim to none, which is, again, a great indicator to how good he possibly could be. But either way, as long as he doesn't stink up the joint, I think he'll be the starter at least for the next couple of games. I think even if he does stink, they're going to stick with him just to see what they have. Because if they lose on Sunday, the NFC East is basically out of reach. And so then you really do just tank and play your young players and get that high draft pick and try again in 2021. How many touchdowns do you think Hurts will have on Sunday? How, like, how are you feeling about the Hurts line. If you're a fantasy guy, maybe a fantasy football playoffs, like where are you at with, with Jalen Hurts in terms of touchdowns on Sunday? Let me know what you guys think down below. And while we're at it, got my bets of the week all locked in and ready to go with our friends at BetUS. You guys can sign up and put your $100 deposit down at chatsports.com forward slash Eagles bet to get that promo code bonus of 125%. Use the promo code Eagles125. It'll turn your $100 deposit into 225 bucks. And I think if you do that, bet on these games. Listen, the Saints right now, minus seven and a half. I don't feel too good about betting on Philadelphia in this one, but I feel really great about the Packers, minus seven and a half over the Lions. And the Packers blow out Detroit by double digits. That, to me, is an easy money win. I think Houston minus one against an anemic Chicago Bear football team that is absolutely floundering with the quarterback issues and the play calling issues. The Bears are very much the Eagles of the NFC North. Like, the defense is pretty good, but the offense and play calling is anemic, and they've not built well around their quarterbacks. I would bet Houston. And the Vikings plus 6.5 against the Bucks. So the Bucks are favored in this game. I think the Vikings keep it close. If not win, I'd bet them to cover right now again, plus 6.5. All those bets and more, you can do it all with our friends at BetUS, chatsports.com forward slash Eagles bet. Use that promo code Eagles125. Here's a really good question. I saw this one a couple of day, days ago. I, I, I pulled it immediately. Uh, Dead uh, Demond Warrior says, you're the newly acquired uh, GM, and Mr. Lurie wants to know your first three moves. One, well, who are you drafting? Two, who are you trading or, 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 or signing in for your agency? Three, who are you cutting? All right, let's all put on our GM hats here, and let's go one by one on his questions, and maybe I'll, I'll give my exact answers. First off, though, if you were the GM, what's your first move? Like, this is the question. You're the GM. Right now, down below in the comments, what's the first thing you do? Start of the new league year in 2021. I want to see what you guys think, but here's what I would do. So here's my moves, right? First move, in order. Decide who the quarterback is. I don't care. You, is, is it Wentz or Hurts? Figure that out now. Now, you got to see what Hurts can do the next couple of games. That's fine. But going into 2021, move number one is to side your quarterback. Can't do anything else after that. Next, focus on focus on, on the draft. I would draft LSU wide receiver Jamar Chase. You're going to have a chance with a sixth or fifth overall pick to get one of the top players in the draft. I would go ahead and draft Jamar Chase. If you don't draft a linebacker like Micah Parsons instead of drafting Jamar Chase, go to free agency and sign a linebacker. There's a couple of good ones. We'll talk about that here in a second. But figure out the wide receiver position. Figure out the linebacker position. Two of the biggest needs and holes right now in the Eagle offense. My fourth move and you mentioned, you know, who you're trading for, who you're signing, who are you cutting. I would cut all the old contracts, and we'll show you guys in a second. There's a lot of old free agents that you can just let walk, who you don't have to re-sign or cut. You just don't re-sign. Saves the Eagles money, gets them younger, and gets them out of some really bad situations. So first off with those draft targets, again, I mentioned drafting Jamar Chase, but I would take any of these four at number six overall. Chase from LSU, best receiver in the draft. Micah Parsons from Penn State, the best linebacker in the draft. If, 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 if for some reason Chase is gone, take Jalen Waddle, the next best wide receiver in the draft out of Alabama. And if you think defensive end is the need, go Gregory Rose, the D-end out of Miami. They say he's, you know, the next Chase Young. He's the best pass rusher in the draft. They will have a chance at one of these four guys if they are inside the top eight in the NFL draft. So take one of them. Now, moving on to possible free agents in 2021, a little early to look at the list, but there are some names that to me say, if you can afford them, big if. I like Ryan Kerrigan, older defensive end, 
out of Washington. Think of like a Chris Long signing that they did a couple of years ago. K.J. Wright could be the, probably the best middle linebacker in the draft. He plays outside linebacker, but could be moved around. He'd be great. Kenny Galladay, Allen Robinson, two wide receivers. If you wanted to go receiver, let's say you went Micah Parsons in the draft, didn't get your, another receiver. I, I, either of these. I think Allen Robinson would be fantastic in Philadelphia. And finally, there's a bunch of offensive linemen. Joe Tooney, he's a guard out of the Patriots. Uh, how about Alejandro Villanueva? If you don't believe in, let's say, Andre Dillard at left tackle or Jordan Mailata could go ahead and grab him as well. There's a lot more possible free agents, but just a little taste there of more videos we'll do in the upcoming offseason because we cover a lot of free agency moves. And finally, cut some players. And listen, the good news is, is Philadelphia has a lot of unrestricted free agents that you can just let walk in free agency. Peters, Jalen Mills, Nikhil Roby Coleman, Nathan Gary, Vinny Curry, I think all of these guys are going to be let go. I don't see them re-signing any one of these players, and that's going to be good for Philadelphia because these guys are playing right now and not playing at a very high level. So, listen, there's a lot of steps, a lot of processes, and whoever the GM is, whether it's Howie Roseman or somebody else, they got to figure this out. But I would 100% go figure out quarterback, draft a wide receiver or linebacker, sign or, 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 or sign a free, free agent wide receiver or, or linebacker, and then cut out all the old contracts and all of the bad players. Make sure you guys are subscribed for whenever we do get into the offseason, which is like probably a month away because the Eagles' last game is January 3rd, and then we're full-blown draft, free agency, and all the other mess that's going to go on with Philadelphia. So hit the big red subscribe button down below. We are nonstop Eagle coverage 365 days of the year. Um, let's, do, let's do two more here. we got time. Chris says, who would be some candidates to replace Doug if they let him go? Add some candidates for the new OC. Let's just go with head coaching candidates here. There's a bunch. If you just Google it, there's probably 10 that would make sense. These, to me, are the big five. Eric Bieniemy, obviously the offensive coordinator out of Kansas City. I don't think he would be – I think he would be a first choice for Howie Lurie, owner of the Eagles, but will he be available? That's a question. I think Joe Brady is going to get a lot of love because they saw what he did at LSU. He's done a good job in Carolina for, that, for what is a very anemic offense. Robert Sala, best offensive coordinator in the NFL in terms of – coaching candidates right now. I think Matt Campbell, the coach at Iowa State, a guy I've been around at Baylor. I think he's one of the hot young names to go ahead and be the next Lincoln Riley or the next possible, um, uh, the guy that came out of, uh, uh, oh man, I'm blanking on his name right now, the Cardinal head coach, Cliff Kingsbury. That's his name. There we go. He's the next Cliff Kingsbury in the NFL. And then Byron Leftwich, who's the OC right now with, with the Bucks. He's been an up and coming name. A lot of people like him as well. Any one of those I think could be an option. But I do think they're going to keep Doug Peterson. I'd be surprised if they let Doug Peterson go. I think if Doug leaves, it's Doug wanting to leave and not Jeffrey Lurie wanting to get rid of him. Okay. Paul gets the final question. This one's good. You think the Eagles will get rid of Carson? How do you think they would do that? If they trade, who would they trade him to? And for what? And how much would it cost to just drop him? So you can't drop him. It costs like $16 million in dead cap money. It's impossible to cut Carson Wentz. Now, there are a lot of teams that would need a quarterback, and some didn't even make my list. The Jets and Jaguars obviously right now do. Will they draft a quarterback? Prop Probably. So they might lead the list. San Francisco, rumored to be into the, the market for a quarterback. You watch New England play on Thursday night. They definitely need, need a quarterback. I think Winston. Uh, um, Bill Belichick would be a great combination. Detroit might leave, um, lose Matt Stafford, get a new coach in there. You can throw in the Colts because they have an old quarterback in Phillip Rivers. There's a lot of teams that need a quarterback. I think you'd get a first or a second round draft pick back. I think that's what you're looking at right now for Carson Wentz because a lot of GMs still think he's a great co a, a quarterback and can be fixed. And as you look at the Eagle draft picks, with only seven and three in the first three rounds and no fourth, an extra second or a first in terms of draft capital. If you like J Jalen Hurts, can you imagine getting, let's say, the Patriots, you know, mid-round, first-round draft pick there in the mid-teens, 14 or 15, while also having your sixth overall pick. You could get a linebacker and a wide receiver and feel really good about the first round. So that, that's that's what you would expect from back from a, a Carson Wentz trade. But again, will they even trade Carson Wentz? Who really knows? Okay, ultimately out for today here on this Eagle Mailbag video. Again, we'll watch what happens on Sunday. We'll break it all down on Monday. Hopefully Philadelphia, if they pull off a win, then Hurts is going to be the talk of the town. Of course, we'll break it all down here on your one-stop shop for everything regarding the Philadelphia Eagles. For Philadelphia Eagles now, I'm Thomas Mott signing off. Enjoy the rest of your day.